Hi, it's time for another verb of the day. Today's verb is change. Let's look at a few definitions. The first definition is to make or become different. An example of this might be the weather changing. A second meaning for change is to move from one to another. You might think of this as changing jobs. A third definition for change is to remove something and replace it with another of the same kind. If you've ever had a flat tire on your car, you likely had to change the tire. A fourth meaning is to put on different clothes. Change is a regular verb. To make the progressive tense, we need to drop the E and then add ing to make changing. To form the past tense and participle forms, all we need to do is add D to the end since the verb already ends with an E. The verb ends change with a voiced sound, so the past tense ending is going to be a D sound. Changed. Let's look at a few phrasal verbs. The first phrasal verb, change into, can have a couple different meanings. The first meaning is to change clothes and put on something else. Here is an, an example sentence. I'm going to change into my swimming suit. When you use this phrasal verb change into, and you're talking about clothes, the thing that comes after the phrasal verb would be the clothes you would be wearing after the change. Okay. Change into uh, has a second meaning, which is to cause something or someone to become another thing or person. When I hear this phrasal verb, I think of children's stories and fairy tales, and, and that's my example sentence. The frog changed into a prince after being kissed by the princess. Change out of means to take off the clothes one is currently wearing to put on other clothes. Here is an example sentence. I'll change out of these wet clothes. So some of you might be asking, well, what's the difference with change into and change out of? And uh, the thing to note is uh, with out of, you're, you're going to follow that with the, let's say, the old clothes. So what you were wearing, whereas with change into, you're talking about the new clothes, the things you are, or are going to be wearing if, when you're using future. Change over is the last phrasal verb we're going to look at. And it means to stop doing or using one thing and start doing or using something else. Here is an, an example. The factory changed over to producing ventilators. This is an example that I have seen and heard in uh, news stories from around the country and, and around the world. Many companies that were producing uh, different uh, mach machinery or parts have changed over their production to produce things that will help uh, people fight the pandemic. Today, for our sample sentences with change, we're going to talk about future possibility. Okay? And we can use the modals may, might, and could to indicate that future possibility. Today, I'm going to look at these example sentences in a slightly different way. Because may, might, and could all have the same meaning, essentially, we're going to read all the affirmative examples at once. Let's look at the first one. The pandemic may change where people live and work. The sentence would have the exact same meaning if I said the pandemic might change where people live and work, or if I said the pandemic could change where people live and work. Here's another example with might. I might change my plans for the weekend. 
and in an example for could, he could change jobs in the next few months. With all of these sentences, I can use may, might, or could. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what's nice about modal is that uh, they are not going to change based on the subject. So if your subject is one thing or one person, or it's they, a you, or an I, it's always that same modal and then the base verb. Let's look at the negative now. I have two example sentences here because we should not use could not in uh, a sentence talking about a negative uh, possibility of something happening in the future. Um, if you, you will hear could not used in American English, but uh, what that indicates more is a, a lack of ability, a lack of past ability specifically. So uh, we don't want to confuse our listeners. So when we're talking about possibility, we're going to stick to may not or might not. The other thing I should note here is that may not and might not do not have contraction forms. So these are always going to be two separate words. Let's look at a couple examples. They may not change the law. This sentence would have the exact same meaning if I said they might not change the law. Another example, she might not change her name after she marries. Finally, let's look at how we make a question to ask someone about a future possibility. And what you might be noticing uh, from my examples is that I'm not using may, might, or could in my questions. What I'm going to use is the simple future tense, either using be going to or will to ask about a future possibility. Let's look at a few examples now. Are you going to change clothes before the concert? Okay. So if someone asks this question, you can answer, I may, or I may not. You could say, I might, or I might not. You could also say, I could. Here's another example. Will they change their reservation? Okay. Again, you can say, they may, or they may not. They might, they might not or they could. Is he going to change the light bulb? He may, he may not. He might, he might not, or he could. All of those will have the exact same meaning. Finally today, let's look at some related words to our verb of the day, change. This exact same spelling and pronunciation, change, can, can also be a noun, and it has many different meanings. I'm going to try and focus on four meanings today that I think might be the most common way you'll hear change used. The first meaning is money given in exchange for an equivalent denomination. That might sound like a lot, but let's look at an example, and I think it'll make it easier. Do you have change for a dollar? Okay. So if someone asks this question, what they're hoping for uh, might be four quarters, which is the same as one US dollar, or 10 dimes, uh, 20 nickels, right? So that's what equivalent just means the same. Okay. Another meaning for change is coins, right? So this would be pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, essentially things that are not paper money. Okay? Here's uh, that definition used in a sentence. I need change for the meter. So many times um, parking meters only take coins, not paper money. Okay? A third meaning for change is money returned to someone as the balance of the amount paid for something. So let's imagine we're in a store. Uh, the clerk tells us that we owe $14.75. I hand the clerk a $20 bill, and then the clerk might say back to me, your change is $5.25. Okay. 
That's the, the third meaning there. The final uh, definition we're going to look at uh, for change as a noun is the act or instance of making or becoming different. Here is an example sentence of that. There's been a change in her behavior. So in this case, maybe we're talking about a child. The child's behavior is different. Okay. Another adjective you might hear related to our verb is unchanging. Right? You're probably noticing the prefix you in there signaling not. So that's our definition, not changing, remaining the same. Here it is in a sentence. His beliefs are unchanging. Finally, I want to leave you with an idiom, and that is to change one's mind. Okay? And really what it means is that somebody is adopting a different opinion or maybe adopting a different plan. Here it is in a sentence. You'll change your mind about broccoli once you taste this dish. So, uh, perhaps somebody really hates it, says, I will not eat broccoli. And someone else is trying to be encouraging and saying, your opinion is going to change once you taste this dish. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you'll use the word change uh, in your speaking or writing this week. Feel free to leave comments and I'll offer some feedback to you. Have a great day.